Now, let's talk about adipose here, also known as saponification. That itself should give you quite a bit of a clue. Okay. Now, it's seen in wet and dry conditions both. Right. It can be seen in wet or dry conditions. And I'll explain. When I say a dry condition, there might be a water body nearby and the body might be submerged in that. Okay. And it's not uncommon to get overlapping features, where in which the person can have mummification also, can have skeletonization also, and can have adiposeal formation as well. It all depends on the environment that the body has been kept in or the part of the body has been exposed to. Now, what exactly is happening here? The fatty tissue in the body is getting converted into a substance known as adiposeal. Okay, this substance is also known as grave wax. Please keep this in mind. Now, the process requires a few things. Firstly, it requires moisture. Very important. Please keep this in mind. It only happens in moist climates. Okay. Then it requires glycerine. Now, glycerine is actually being produced by the body itself when the fatty acids are being produced, right? The adipose tissue is being broken down, fatty acids are being produced, and at that point, glycerine will also be produced as a byproduct. This acts as a positive feedback loop where in it helps itself cause more deconstruction or more lipolysis to happen or more adipose formation to happen, okay? Because essentially what is happening is hydrogenation of fats. Another very important thing that you need to have is calcium, along with which you need to have ammonia. Please don't forget, calcium and ammonia, very important. Now, fatty acids that get produced, right? Mainly, the most important one that you need to know is palmitic acid. Okay, there's obviously also going to be oleic acid, stearic acid, hydroxystearic acid, but the main one that you need to know is palmitic acid is produced. Okay, but if you can remember, remember that it is palmitic, oleic, steric, and hydrosteric. Now, what exactly is happening in the formation? This may seem very confusing at first glance, but don't worry, we'll go through it one by one. Okay, first thing that you need to know is Clostridium perfringens. Right? We talked about it earlier. We talked about Clostridium welchi, we talked about Clostridium perfringens. We talked about how Clostridia in general will release lecithinase and that causes H lag. Right? Hopefully you remember what H lag is. It's basically what's happening due to lecithinase. This lecithinase here is causing H lag. H for hemolysis. L for what? L for what? Liquefaction. A for adipose formation and G for gas formation, right? Now, the liquefaction doesn't always need to be just clots. The liquefaction can also be of various material around the body. Now, what is this lecithinase doing actually here? Well, it's causing hydrolysis and hydrogenation, as you can see here, right? And it's causing this of the fat in the body. And as this fat slowly gets hydrogenated to become fatty acids, salt and ammonia get added to make insoluble salts and that is what forms adipose here. Okay, now the total time taken for this process is anywhere between three days to three months. Now this seems like a large gap, but actually what's happened is, to explain this in a very simple way is, they have found cases of bodies which have undergone saponification in just as little as three days. Keep in mind, very important, they're not saying that the entire body has become an adipose here heavy body or adipose here leaden body. What they are saying is adipose here formation has taken place in the body somewhere and the earliest they've seen it is three days, right? So three days to three months is the range that we're looking at. Now, what exactly is the medico legal importance of adipose here formation? Well, first and foremost, what you need to know is it gives off a sweetish odor, also known as a rancid butter odor, okay? Which is butter, which is spoiled butter, right? Then, Injury features and facial features are preserved, right? So therefore, it will immediately help with what? One, it could possibly help with identification of the person. And two, it could possibly help you also figure out the manner of injuries, the shape of the injuries, the site of the injuries. Basically, it will give you an idea as to the possible cause of death also. Then we have, very importantly, the time since death, right? Time since death because we know three days to three months. So therefore, it will give you a rough idea of when the person could have possibly passed on. Now, I have provided two pictures here from cases that we've done of saponification or adipose formation. Now, if you look at the body, you see this sickly yellow color, 
I'm sure you're able to appreciate this sickly yellow color. But also you note that certain features in the face are preserved, right? But also, very important, note that skeletonization has also taken place in a few areas, like here, here, and even the lower jaw, right? Skeletonization has taken place. But what is important to remember is, we found this body around six months afterwards, okay? So keep in mind, three days to three months, but the upper limit can also exist to whenever. Here is another picture, right? Unfortunately, we were only able to recover half the body, right? The head was also missing. We only recovered this torso. But the torso was found in water and moisture is very, very important to create adipose here, which is what has happened here, okay? I hope you're able to appreciate the yellowish discoloration and the fact that it still looks like there is some sort of vitality in this body, right? It doesn't look completely emaciated. The body looks flabby. That's one of the hallmark features. Next, let's talk about the conditions which are favorable and unfavorable for the formation of adipose here. Well, first and foremost, if the person is fat, female or a newborn, right? This question has been asked before, which is at what age, at what age does adipose here formation not take place? So if the person is above seven months of intrauterine life, then only will you see adipose here formation in that body. Below seven months, you will not see it because there are barely any adipose deposits in the baby's body. Please keep this in mind. Then, unfavorable. Obviously, it's going to be someone who is the exact opposite. Someone who's thin, who's male and who's old. Next, we have to talk about temperature. When which, what is favorable is room temperature, right? And what is unfavorable is extremes of high or low temperature. Now, students often get confused because they assume that high temperature is required or very, very low temperature is required because of some reason or the other. But let me assure you, it requires normal room temperature. It could be a little warmer, but it can't be extremes of either, okay? And the reason is very simple. Bacterial activity and enzyme activity are going to be highest at a temperature which is optimal for survival. So that is going to be somewhere around the room temperature, okay? Please keep this in mind. Next, what about the grave environment, right? What sort of grave does the person need to be in? First and foremost, person needs to be in a deep grave, moist climate, is that favorable? Yes, very favorable. The reason being that if they were in a shallow grave and it was very, very dry, then the person would simply start having dehydration from exposure to the dry climate. What about the pH? What sort of situation do we need here? Well, neutral to alkaline is very, very favorable, right? Because bacteria will thrive on that. Whereas acidic environments might be bacteriostatic towards clostridium and that might inhibit the production of lecithinase, which would then inhibit the entire process of adipose formation. 